Hi, Tyler. Hey, how's it going? Great. I wish I knew this was a black tie event. I feel severely underdressed. Well, you know, this is my first, uh, my first Zoom conference session, so I, I decided to really go in. I appreciate it, and you're doing great. <laughs> Thank you for giving our quarantine an anthem. Oh, yeah, well, I guess that happened. Can you talk about the charity tied to level of concern and why you feel so compelled to help? Yeah, so Crew Nation is a charity that, that, that helps a lot of the, um, the people that are behind the scenes of the music industry that kind of help it, help it move forward, specifically the live um, aspect of music. And, you know, we have a lot of crew members, uh, but also all the arenas and venues that we've visited um, while on tour. Uh, there's so many of these buildings that are kind of like the, the lifeblood of, of some of these cities. And they, they have so many, so much staff and so many great people there. And this is a moment where with everything on hold, just like a lot of industries, um, there's a lot of uncertainty. And being a part of um, this industry, we felt like it would just, uh, it, it made sense to, to partner up with a charity that was going to look after those people. Well, that's amazing. And you also have some merch that specifically goes to Crew Nation on the website. Who designed yeah, the we have like a hoodie and stuff that if you, if you purchase that, oh, wow, nice. <laughs> that's, that's what it looks like. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, so that's at the 21 Pilots merch store. Um, you can also donate directly and apply for relief if you've been affected at livenationentertainment.com slash crew nation. Um, let's talk about the video, which is incredible that this is coming out of quarantine and so perfect in its essence. Is this pretty much a documentary? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Um, you're watching us film a video and build a song at the same time. And um, yeah, I mean, it just made sense. I really enjoyed being able to go back to the way we used to make videos, which was no budget, no crew, just just a simple idea. And, um, you know, using our friend Mark with, uh, you know, his, his editing knowledge and his ability to kind of like piece it all together. Um, and that was it. That's how we, that's how we always did videos before, before a label got involved, before we, you know, had money to spend on, on a music video. And so it was really, it was really fun to have an excuse to get back to that. Sure. Are you and Josh really neighbors? <laughs> um, that's our ninth house. So yeah, in our, <laughs> ninth, in our ninth houses, we're neighbors. Nice. Uh, this is the first song that you also wrote on electric guitar. Yeah. What kind of other things are you doing differently or maybe for the first time? Um, actually, this is one of the first songs that Josh was recording drums in a different style like in his own studio and sent them over. Um, and so it was truly a, uh, a back and forth um, on the sound of the record, um, which was kind of a first for us. We always kind of got together for drums. Um, and so that paired with me kind of learning how to play electric guitar for the first time, it, it kind of created a, a bit of a, a new sound for us at least. This was also produced with Paul from Mute Math again. How have you guys been able to work together? Is it this guy? Yeah, I mean, so Paul was was in a band called Mute, which Josh and I, it was one of our favorite bands. And um, we were lucky enough to tour with them as well. And just struck up a natural relationship with them. And um, specifically Paul, for me, I, I just admired his, his DIY attitude all through their career. You know, they recorded all their own records um, and he's helped me in a lot of ways with uh, just some of the programming, specifically with drums. You know, there's a science to capturing live drums. There's a science to capturing the, the energy that Josh would put out on, on a live kit. And there's so many mics and so many takes and so much editing. And, and um, so specifically in that realm, uh, Paul has really, has really stepped in and kind of like taught me some of the things that he's learned really through trial and error for him because uh, he just taught himself as well. So. Is this the beginning of a new era? Um, I would say that this is, this is just something in between. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people want to know what's happening to Clancy and. Yeah. No, I, I think that just with the, it just felt right to, to release a song now, uh, especially with, you know, the content and what, what the lyrics were saying and 
um, yeah, we tried to we tried to not overcommit to something brand new as far as uh, you know the aesthetics of it all because we wanted to kind of wait for what we we have in store. So sure. Well, speaking of brand new, somebody's a brand new daddy. Congratulations! Yeah. It's fun, man. It's a uh, it's exciting. It's like I, I don't know. It's scary because I've been so motivated by, you know, bettering myself and outdoing myself and whether it's chasing, you know, validation or success or just working hard at something and feeling like you're getting better at something, all these things that motivate a person, all of a sudden this brand new blob of skin enters your life and you realize that this trumps all of it all the way to the point where if, if that blob of skin asked you to quit everything you're doing, you would, which is scary. Um, and so this, my daughter is, is such a, is such a fun, but exciting, new, scary motivation for why I do what I do. And, uh, it's, it's just fun to wake up every day. So. Love that. Babies are the best. Mm -hmm. Are you telling any dad jokes yet? <laughs> I've been, I've been holding off, but I've been collecting them, waiting for, um, you know, when I get back out into the, into the world to unleash, to unleash their, their <laughs> beauty. Do you have as many sleeping photos of Roe as you do of Josh yet? <laughs> it's, it's getting close. Uh, it's a lot of years of, of touring, traveling in a van, you know, sharing hotel rooms with guys like, you know, so I, yeah, I think it was a running joke for a while. Josh and I would try to like just capture each other sleeping which is silly i guess but to send that in like a group thread with your guys that you're traveling with it's um i don't know turned into like a gotcha moment and so i, I do have a i do have a lot of sleeping photos of josh uh, but it's getting close there because i i do enjoy staring at my daughter when she's sleeping maybe a coffee table book one day yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know you have the most amazing fans, and I thought we could do some quick quit hits, quick hits, mm -hmm. um, deal with a bunch of questions. So feel free to pass, and we'll just run down and get kind of your first initial reaction, okay? Okay. All right, your favorite Pokemon? Clefairy. Thoughts about doing a live concert from home? Seems tired. Well, you seem tired. <laughs> yeah. Well. All right. One thing you've learned about yourself during quarantine. Um, uh, lack of self-control, getting myself to go to bed when my wife is not making me. Gotcha. Have you been cooking at all? No. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how to cook. Okay. Thoughts on Animal Crossing? I've not played it, um, and I feel like I'm missing out because I feel it's, it seems like it would be right up my alley. Your favorite thing about watching Jenna be a mom? Uh, she somehow doesn't get tired. I, I get excited. You know, when, I, when I'm rocking my daughter, I just think of it differently. Not that I don't love her as much as my daughter loves her, but her as much as my wife loves my daughter, but it's just a different connection where if my daughter's crying and I need to rock her, I will count how many times I rock her. Be like, all right, I'm gonna rock her 500 times. And then if she's not asleep by then, and that's how my brain has always worked. You know, I count my steps. You know, when I, when I run, you know, I count breaths. Like, I don't know, I'm kind of weird that way. But my wife just is perpetually giving herself up to this thing, no matter what. And I'm a little more, I don't know, regimented in the way that I'm, I'm loving my daughter at this point. So it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch my wife just live this and kind of realize that she was, she was, you know, made for this. Do you sing your own songs to row? Um, songs I'm working on. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, so there's a lot more or. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've, I've written a ton of little tiny weird ditties that I sing to her that, that then I realized, oh, let me grab my phone and, and, and record a voice memo real quick because that might actually be something. Um, but a lot of it's nonsense. But um, yeah, no, always always working on stuff. 
do you want to give us a little ditty right now? <laughs> um, uh, there was a song that I, it's, it's a, I, it says a nursing rhyme, nursery rhyme, but it, I changed the lyrics. I was, I was, there was a time where she was staying up all hours of the night and I tried to give my, my wife a, a break. And so, um, my daughter and I would watch Lord of the Rings together. And so I, I, uh, I replaced the, the lyrics to a well-known song. It would say, um, Rosie, baby, she's my girl MacGyver. Out of all the people, she's in my top fiver. Right behind Gimli, Legolas, and Strider. Rosie, baby, your mommy's number one. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, and she just would stare at me like, you're an idiot. That's, a, that's just a baby thing. Don't take it yeah. personally. <laughs> All right, if you were a muffin, what flavor would you be? Um, is there like a burrito flavored muffin? <laughs> there is, definitely is now. Okay. <laughs> favorite Mario Kart character? Yoshi is my favorite character, but in Nintendo 64, Bowser is by far the, the, the best character because of his weight and his top speed and his inability to um spin out wow what is your spirit animal um i guess when i was a little kid i would say cheetah it was always it tied between that and spider monkey who is michael and julia <laughs> <laughs> um I guess when I was writing that song, I loved the idea of just name dropping two random people because I feel like everyone has a Michael and a Julie in their life that are either thinking they're experts on what's going on in the world or experts on your personal relationships. And um, I personally have uh, a friend named Michael, and um, but I don't think I was thinking of him particularly <laughs> as much as I was just picking two f names that I felt applied to um, what most people would think is, I don't know, annoying people. Sure. Well, hopefully Michael and Julie are having a great quarantine. Yeah. What is the perfect ratio of mac and cheese to ketchup? <laughs> you know, the, the, the better the mac and cheese, the less ketchup you need. It's the truth. So if you make me mac and cheese and I ask for ketchup, that's, you're already, that's a strike one. I shouldn't need the mac and cheese, but uh, or sorry, I shouldn't need the ketchup, um, but if it's if it's that home style crap, like I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put ketchup on it. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite subject in school? Um, you know I don't think I've ever been asked that. It seems like one I'd be asked all the time. I hated math. I guess I would say history. Okay. If Josh was a food, what food would he be? Um, gosh, that's such a good question. I really don't want to blow this. He would be a kiwi, but but kiwis have a little fuzz on them, and, he, and this guy is just hairless everywhere. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a shaved kiwi. Oh my god! Hashtag shaved kiwi. All right, just a couple more. What was harder, naming Roe or Ned? Ooh, Ned was way easier. I think when you're naming a, a, a your kid, the way that I've explained it to people is there's so much pressure leading up to it, where you're, you know, before she's born. You're wondering, is this the right name? Is she gonna get made fun of for some reason? Is this, does this, you know, there's just a lot of pressure in, uh, in naming someone. Uh, but then when she was born, it was like, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's her name. It's perfect, it connects perfectly. And that's why whenever you ask your parents or someone older about, you know, hey, how did you name your kids? Like, what, don't you feel like there was a pressure there? They always, they always meet that question with, the, oh no, it was just, it was easy. Because they remember what it was like to just see that name connect with that person and it makes sense. They kind of forget there is a natural, um, I don't know, uh, worry that the, that the name isn't gonna work, um, but that's all resolved once you, once you see the kid. What's your BTS bias? 
GS buys. The um, uh, I, Josh and I, well, our well, our first place that we ever played music other than our own country was in Asia, and you know we went to um, Japan and Korea and even to China and we'll always have an affinity towards the culture and that was before kind of this whole thing started happening and to watch it happen i i don't know it's just exciting for us to watch so a pass then <laughs> yeah gotcha all right uh i know you gotta go thank you so much for taking some time with us if you'd like to lead us out with any um direct messages to the click i'd like to give you that opportunity I mean, obviously stay safe um, and I don't know, I guess I would say that everyone's going through a different version of this. I think it's easy for us to all apply our experience through, um, through all of this and think that everyone's going through the same thing. You know, some people have a yard and some people don't. And that can be a difference. You know, when you're trapped in a single room, uh, you, the, the anxiety starts to pile up. And um, so just be, be considerate when, when we all start making decisions on, on how best to get back out there because everyone is going through something different. And um, the slower we move and the, the, the more understanding we are uh, about everyone's differences, um, the better chance we'll have coming out of this, not having lost any of ourselves. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Also stream the hell out of level of concern because that's like, it's like a nice little warm blanket. Quarantine yeah. to cover up with. We can't wait to hear the new stuff. Love to you and the whole family. And we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you so much for having me. I'll see you.